Convocation is now in session. As Chancellor, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our 311th Convocation. Before we proceed with the ceremony, I would like to call upon Dr. Angie Manditch, President, University's Land Acknowledgement. Good morning. Western University is situated on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Lenape, and Attawandrans people, who've had a long-standing relationship to the land and region of southwestern Ontario and the city of London. The local First Nation communities of our area include Chippewa of the Thames First Nation, Oneida Nation of the Thames, Muncie Delaware Nation. In the region, there are 11 First Nation communities and a growing Indigenous urban population. Western values the significant historical and contemporary contributions of local and regional First Nations and of all the original people of Turtle Island. Megwitch, thank you. To all our graduates, first let me say congratulations. You've worked hard to achieve this. Graduation represents a major milestone in your lives. At Convocation, we assemble as a university community to celebrate and recognize your achievements at Western and to wish you every success for the future. Your learning days are far from over. Learning is a lifelong process. Western has not provided you with answers to all questions. At most, we hope that what stays with you is a way of thinking objectively, approaching problems with an open mind and a healthy respect for new ideas, all tempered with compassion and empathy for the human condition. You are forever a cherished member of this great university, founded more than a century ago. We welcome you into the Western family. Again, congratulations to each and every one of you. Today, we also confer an honorary degree upon John Kelton, an acknowledgement of his extraordinary career as an outstanding clinician, teacher, researcher, and innovator. As a graduate of Sulich, you are an inspiration to students and fellow alumni as a leader in the way healthcare is taught and delivered around the globe, and we look forward to honoring you at your alma mater. To present our distinguished candidate, I now call upon Dr. Dwight Moulin, Sulich School of Medicine and Dentistry. Dr. John Kelton. Dr. Kelton has set an extraordinary example for outstanding achievement as a physician, scientist, teacher, administrator, and fundraiser. In addition, he remains a dedicated clinician who delivers compassionate care to his patients. John Kelton hails from Windsor, Ontario. I met John when we were freshmen at Western sometime in the last century, 1967 to be more precise. And yes, among his many achievements, John was also a Western Mustang. We were on the Western cross country team about a half century ago. So it's most appropriate for me to say that John Kelton hit the ground running at Western, and he has been running ever since. John graduated cum laude from Western's medical school in 1973, where he received the gold medal. He completed his residency program in internal medicine and hematology at Duke University, and then became a member of the Faculty of Health Sciences at McMaster, where he founded a very successful laboratory and research program. Over the next 30 years, Dr. Kelton has focused on basic and clinical research on platelet and bleeding disorders, which have changed the practice of medicine. He developed innovative changes in the care given to patients with these disorders, particularly pregnant women and patients with immune reactions to various medications. He also spearheaded a critical uh, research on the role of heparin, a commonly used blood thinner in the development of lowered platelet count or thrombocytopenia. This bleeding disorder, known as heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, can be life-threatening, and Dr. Kelton changed the practice of medicine in dealing with this disorder. These, these are just two examples of how his work has influenced medical practice around the world. This is reflected in more than 300 scientific publications, including more than 15 original articles 
in the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine. It also has resulted in many national and international awards, including election to the American Association of Physicians and the Royal Society of Canada. In 2001, Dr. Kelton was selected as Dean and Vice President of the Faculty of Health Sciences at McMaster University. This also included Dean of the Decrut School of Medicine, and he held these positions for an unprecedented 15 years until he stepped down as Dean in June of 2016. During his tenure as Dean and Vice President, he was successful in raising more than $200 million in private donations for research and education programs at uh, McMaster University. He also organized the McMaster Community and Rural Education Program for both undergraduate and graduate students and developed partner medical schools in Kitchener and St. Catharines. Dr. John Kelton has changed the way healthcare is taught and delivered around the world. All of this culminated in his appointment as a member of the Order of Canada in 2015 and his extraordinary career continues as executive director of the Michael G. DeGroote Initiative in Innovation in Healthcare at McMaster University. As a classmate of John Kelton, I am extremely proud to recognize him for all his achievements. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and in the name of the Senate, I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa upon John Kelton. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Congratulations, Dr. Kelton. On behalf of all assembled here today, I should now like to invite our newest alumnus, Dr. John Kelton, to address convocation. Mr. Chancellor, Jack Cowan, my friend, longtime mentor, President, Vice Chancellor, Emmett Chakma, honored guests, but most of all, most of all, graduates from Western University, class of 2018. Nice ring. I'm honored to be invited to participate in this important milestone of your lives. This is your graduation, but it's sort of a homecoming for me. 45 years ago, this exact month, this exact auditorium, I think I sat exactly there in a lucky chair my mom, my dad, my soon-to-be wife, Kathleen, attended my graduation, and I heard the honorary degree recipient deliver just possibly the single greatest convocation speech of modern times. Or maybe not. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember a thing. I do think I was daydreaming about my hair, which was long enough to have allowed me to have a man bun <laughs> if only they had been invented back then. But my hair and I were ready to take on the world, just like you are. Today, my hair and I can only acknowledge much of what I've achieved in the past 45 years since graduating from Western is rooted in Western. This morning, I return to humbly accept this great honor. Thank you. A few weeks ago, I was thinking, what would I say to you today? I needed a theme. What would I say to dear, longtime friends, 
Paul Cooper, Dwight Moulin, two eminent neurologists. What deep thoughts would I explore near where Michael Strong, one of Canada's top brain experts, what penetrating insights would I share with Vice President John Capone, whose studies of brain chemistry re done years ago at Mac remain widely quoted? What about in front of one of Ontario's great innovators, Cal Stiller? What would I talk about mostly in front of a room of newly minted graduates, brainiacs? From a school that Dr. Chakma unabashedly celebrates intellectual excellence and has made me so very proud. I know, I'll talk about brains. A few years ago, I was visiting my mom and dad in Leamington. At that time, my dad was 100, my mom was 98. Graduates, longevity is in large measure hereditary, so choose your parents carefully. <laughs> we went for a drive and stopped at the lake. Our vantage point allowed us to see a bald eagle, unmistakably in the tree above the water. My dad did what dads do, in fact, what all men do, offered some useless trivia. At two kilometers, an eagle can distinguish a dime from a quarter. Hmm, that got me thinking. Can birds really see that well? And maybe more importantly, why would an eagle want to know the difference between a dime and a quarter? I looked it up, it turns out it was true. All birds, especially birds of prey, have exceptional vision, many, many times more acute than ours. They have deep fovea, densely arranged cones circling a macula. Most of all, their optic lobes have filled the brain, crowding out other components, literally producing a bird brain. <laughs> Another memory. A couple years ago, I was walking my dogs down our street in Dundas. It was dark, quiet, foggy. Suddenly, both dogs, almost as one, lifted their noses, inhaled, and began barking furiously. Only then did the fog part enough for me to see two blocks away deer bolting into the brush. Since I've learned that a dog can smell thousands of times more acutely than human, they can distinguish, separate, analyze molecules across a cribiform plate with olfactory turbinates at a part per billion. Their olfactory ability is second to none. So eagles can really see. Dogs can really smell. Much, much better than we can. In those millions of years of random, but seemingly purposeful genetic sorting that brought you graduates here today, we humans downgraded our olfactory lobes, our cortical, our occipital lobes, but in return, we received the most marvelous collection of crisscrossing neurons called the frontal cortex. Genetically, we had to give to get, but what a fabulous trade. Today, if it was possible, I could reach up and touch that tiny part of my brain that is allowing me to read this speech this minute. A different part of my brain allows me to speak. But I couldn't touch. Not one of us could touch the part of the brain that defines our unique human attributes. And at the pinnacle of these special human attributes are feelings. Feelings of compassion, empathy, and perhaps the most complex one of all, kindness. These are the connective tissues of our families, our friends, and our communities. These capacities are uniquely ours uniquely human. It's the spider web that connects us all. These are early but complex innate traits. We've got a beautiful granddaughter. In fact, we've got three beautiful granddaughters. By age two, if she saw her mom cry, she'll hug her for comfort. By age three or four, if she sees her mother sad, She'll hug her, and then she'll do something incredibly complex. She will hand her mom her favorite toy. This 
incredibly complex, innate, yet learned act of kindness is seen in no other species, just us, just you. It requires perception, processing, and action, and the neurons across the entire prefrontal sections of the brain are lit up and activated. Graduates, an important day for you. You've graduated from one of Canada's top universities. I am so grateful to have done it ahead of you. <laughs> Several years ago, I read a wonderful book by David Brooks entitled The Road to Character. Brooks took a long viewpoint of all of our lives. I'm towards the end, you're towards the beginning. He talked about two traits, your resume virtues and your eulogy virtues. Today's a very important day for your resume, maybe the most important. But even this great accomplishment that you've achieved today cannot and should not define you. Your eulogy will be all about your character, less about your achievements. The accounting of your life should be about empathy, your compassion, your kindness. Sometimes we're not always kind. A few years ago, I was leaving my clinic after a routine day and I was tired. I stepped into the elevator and I was thinking about unimportant routine things. I can't remember what I was thinking about. Already in the elevator were three people. On the stretcher was a middle-aged woman on her way to surgery. Gowned, capped. At her foot and head stood a nurse and a medical student. The two of them were engaged in an enthusiastic conversation about a TV show I can hardly remember, but I think it was The Bachelor. As the elevator stopped on the surgery floor for the first time, I looked at the patient, I looked at the woman. I had to look down at her. She was on a stretcher, I was standing. For me, it had been like she hadn't been there. She wasn't there at all. I was literally and figuratively well above her. I noticed she was staring, staring intensely, which in her case meant she was staring straight up. They rolled her out the door towards the OR, and as the elevator continued downward, I was the only one, so I looked up to see what she'd seen. Above me was a yellowing plastic grill in a dusty light, a fan beside it choked with, with cobwebs. Her pre-surgery experience was hearing about bachelor chatter and a dirty elevator. She would have been anxious and worried. And as I thought about it, I realized this was an opportunity lost. I wished I had noticed her. I wished I had thought about her situation sooner. I wish I had not been self-centered. I wished, maybe more than anything, I had spoken with her. I wished that I had been kind. It would have taken almost nothing from me. It would have taken some effort, a moment or two, but it might have meant something to her. Graduates, I've learned that sometimes in moments, especially in moments of inattention, kindness can become heavy lifting. But there's always an opportunity for kindness, always. How long does it sit, take to say a kind word or make a reassuring gesture, especially at times that we're living in today? Passing up opportunities to, to be kind will lay bricks of regret that will stay in your lives. It probably is true, as many scientists, especially neurocognitive scientists, believe, that we can develop our minds, our attitudes, our kindness by working it like a muscle. But that also means that kindness can atrophy like a muscle. Like the fit, fit bit reminds us to walk or run we need cues to activate our kindness. In our house is a sign that my wife Kathleen, here today, brought from her parents' house. The sign says, no act of kindness, however small, is ever wasted. If we, 
if you can maintain your focus on kindness, if you can develop into a set of well-used neural pathways through plasticity, you can have an almost magical impact on the people around us. Eagles might be able to spot a dime from a kilometer, dogs can sense a deer in the fog, but we are built for amazing feats of support, caring, and kindness. As you go forward in your careers and your lives, I hope you'll appreciate and extend your own amazing abilities. Those will be, like today, your resume virtues. Pursue your careers with enthusiasm and celebrate with pride your accomplishments, some of which may make headlines, but way more important, use your compassionate gifts to their full advantage. Be kind. The times when you do, especially when you could have behaved otherwise, will be the times that stay with you and perhaps with the people that you touched. Moments like that remain with us forever, unlike Possibly, for example, convocation speeches. If you remember one idea from the speech tomorrow, I'll consider it one of the great resume triumphs of my career. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you very much, John, for your insightful and inspiring address, highlighting empathy, compassion, and kindness in such a wonderful way. I have uh, tremendous confidence in our graduates, and I do believe that uh, they will actually remember those three wonderful words because of the way you presented them, empathy, compassion, and kindness. So graduates, don't disappoint me. Please remember. As an outstanding clinician, teacher, and scholar, and innovator, you have enhanced global understanding of blood disorders. We are particularly proud that uh, your journey began here at Western, and we are excited today to celebrate your contributions, so many of them, to healthcare, education, knowledge worldwide. Distinguished guests, please join me in congratulating our newest honorary doctor of science, Dr. John Kelton. At this time, I take pleasure in asking the Vice Chancellor to present the recipient of the Marilyn Robinson Award for Excellence in Teaching. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. The Marilyn Robinson Award for Excellence in Teaching was established in 1997. It honors the memory of an enthusiastic and inspirational teacher who is much loved and respected by both colleagues and students. Will Dr. Sarah McLean please step forward? Dr. McLean's students describe her as clear, energetic, enthusiastic, with a teaching style that makes them excited to learn. And they just saw the evidence of that. She strives to include interaction, collaboration, and inspiration, ensuring student perspective through peer-to-peer -peer interactions. At the center of her teaching is innovation through technology. Sarah designed for her medical sciences class decision trees called laboratory trees, online simulations in which students' decisions lead them down different paths, similar to the choose your own adventure books. This allows them to learn from their mistakes and receive immediate feedback, enhancing their confidence and performance during experiments in the lab. She has developed experiential learning opportunities with community partners in London to allow students to apply knowledge to real-world health issues. She also provides mentorship outside the classroom by hosting Mentorship Mondays, unique, certainly, on our campus and many other campuses, to discuss careers, volunteering, and work-life balance. Mr. Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present to you Dr. Sarah McLean, recipient of the Marilyn Robinson Award for Excellence in Teaching.
I take pleasure in asking the Vice Chancellor to present a distinguished student who is a recipient of the Honorable G. Howard Ferguson Award. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. The Honorable G. Howard Ferguson Award is named in honor of the former Premier of Ontario and former Chancellor of this university. It is awarded annually to a full-time student who demonstrates excellence in scholarship, athletics, and all-round contributions to university life. Will Mr. Reed Vassallo please step forward? <laughs> the extended life of a member of Western's rowing team includes 5.30 a.m. start times, training six days a week, second sessions, team meetings, and strength and conditioning training. It also includes philanthropy and community engagement on top of academic requirements. Student athletes are often referred to as the university's best ambassadors. Reed is who they are speaking of. Reed looks out at our expectations and asks, how can I do more? He's tenacious, humble, diligent, and compassionate. Reed was a captain a national champion, an MVP, president of the rowing team, student athlete executive, and the recipient of the prestigious Purple Blanket Award. Equally important, Reed was a scholar achieving remarkably high standings in the classroom and on MCAT. We are proud to call Reed a Western rowing alumnus, and he is highly deserving of this award. Mr. Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present to you Mr. Reed Vassalo, recipient of the Honorable G. Howard Ferguson Award. I take pleasure in asking the Vice Chancellor to present to convocation our newly appointed Professor Emeritus. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. The designation of Professor Emeritus is an honorary title which recognizes long and distinguished academic service. Will Dr. Marjorie Johnson please step forward? Professor Johnson joined the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology as a full-time faculty member in 2000. Marjorie is a tremendously gifted anatomist, teacher, and educational leader. Her accomplishments have been recognized by numerous prestigious awards, including Western's Edward G. Pleva Award for Teaching, Schulich's Distinguished Leader in Medical Education Award, a 3M National Teaching Fellowship, and the Ontario Confederation of Colleges and University Faculty Associations Teaching Award. Within anatomy and cell biology, Marjorie served as associate chair for clinical anatomy and director of clinical anatomy MSc program. She also served on Schulich's undergraduate medical education accreditation committee as chair of the subcommittee for indigenous medical admissions and as the grand marshal of medical convocation. During her time at Western, Marjorie has positively influenced the lives and carries of thousands of undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate students in the Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry, the School of Nursing, and the Faculty of Health Science. Mr. Chancellor, may I present Professor Emeritus Marjorie Johnson. Will the candidates for degrees, diplomas, and certificates please rise? Mr. Chancellor, I'm very much honored to present to you the candidates 
who have successfully completed their academic programs at Western. I ask you to admit them to the degrees, diplomas, and certificates for which they have been recommended by the Senate of our university. Be vested in me by the Senate, you will be admitted to the degrees, diplomas, and certificates as shall be announced by the public orators. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Will the candidates please be seated? Mr. Chancellor, graduating students, and distinguished guests, convocation is the single most important time of celebration in the life of the university. Today, we honor those graduating students who through determination, hard work, and intelligence have met the demanding standards of a Western degree. Today is also a proud day for all of us associated with Western, including our Board of Governors and Senate, our faculty, our staff, and our friends in the community. It is wonderful to see so many members of our community of learning who have taken the time to be with us to celebrate this important day in the lives of our graduates and the life of the university. Today, those of you crossing the platform join a special group known as Western Alumni. That numbers more than 290,000 alumni living in over 150 different countries around the world. We are pleased to have Mr. Chris Smith representing our Alumni Association with us, and I'd ask him to please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Western's Board of Governors is charged with responsibility for the overall governance of this institution. Today we have with us Ms. Kathy Barkhart, Jason, representing our Board of Governors, and I'll ask her to please stand and be recognized. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank the parents, spouses, partners, children, relatives, and friends of our graduates who are here today. This celebration would not have been possible without your loving support. I ask that our graduating class rise once again, turn around, face your family and friends, and give them a warm round of applause for supporting your journey. Now let me congratulate once again the remarkable students who graduate today with Western degrees. Today you become partners in outstanding academic achievements of the University of Western Ontario. My warmest wishes to each and every one of you. We are now going to proceed with the granting of the degrees and diplomas. Before we do so, I have two very special requests for those of you in the audience. First. As a courtesy to all graduates and their families, please hold your applause and other forms of expressions of joy until the public auditors signal when applause is appropriate throughout the ceremony. So if a large class uh, will receive three graduates at a time, minus the PhDs, and if you cheer them up all the time, there'll be interruptions and which leads to the following situation. Graduates and their families and the audience will not be able to hear their names. Each graduate is very special to us, so we want the ceremony to be as solemn as possible because this is a very special occasion. So please hold your applause. What we do is we break the class into groups at an interval. We'll encourage you to join us to cheer our graduates up please do so at that point in time. This will ensure that each graduate's names will be heard and will be respectful of all of them. Second, the photographs of, those, of this special occasion, of course, are important to all of you. As you heard before the ceremony began, we are pleased to provide each graduate with a special photograph of this very special occasion. 
We ask you to remain in your seats throughout the ceremony, and of course, feel free to take pictures from there. I now call on the public auditors to introduce the candidates for degrees. Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates from the School of Graduate and Postdoctoral Studies for the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Doa Abu Al-Ola. Hassan Ahmed. Lauren Allen. Heba Al Nasseri Igi Bayo. Tyler Beveridge. Jessica Blum. Dante Capaldi. Sarah Coughlin.
Jason Lloyd Chan. Tara Elizabeth Cinnamon Condos. Curtis Hendrick Decker. Mohammed Hader Hassan. James Hutchinbruther. Julianne Kaiser. Kaysen King. Bart Kolandowski. Ivan Kosick. Holly Laxo. Catherine Nan Lee. He sung Lim. Samantha Medwid. Paxton Montgomery Moon. Trevor Mori
Ray Nee. Laura Jillian Rosen. Mangur Sun. Justin Say. Alana Ruth Watson. Stephanie Ann Zukowski. Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the degree Master of Science. Mark Alexander Abbott, Mona Mohammed Al Shaikh, Shinthuja Arulanantham, Pardas Baha, Ramanpreet Brar, Samanpreet Brar. Caitlin Custiles, John DeMarco, Ruth Maurice Ilgamal, Mohammed Glal Hassan El Shaturi, Kui Fang, Natalie Megan Fava. Kui Gao. Rebecca Horst, Smitri Jurisingani. <laughs> Estefanthia Kiatos. Jisoo Kim, 
Dorota Maria Kloabovich. Siwing Melody Lam, Darius Hok Chun Lao, Josie Li Go, Mitchell Raymond Mann, Sarah. Matovich, Stephanie Suon Park, Monica Daniela Riviero Gutierrez, Rebecca Rodriguez. Austin Daniel Rosenboro. Ashkan Sadri. Carla Solo. Jessica Ling Trong. Tera Vakili, Heather Marie Young, Bling Yu. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates from the Schulich School of Medicine and Dentistry and the Faculty of Science for the degree Bachelor of Medical Sciences Honors Programs. Camilla Sinclair Abdur Rashid, Shakir Sayad Ahmed, Posia Ahmed. Mustafa Al Ani, Yosef Ahmed, Yasir Amar Al Dwazi. Suleyman Al Halbuni, Aishum Ali, Amir Abadi. Nasser Al Kishman, Rachel Allen. Zinia Al Nahajar Vivian On Matthew Aurora Quise Adu Asente
Sarah Aslin, Yasmin Badakshe, Ashish Jim Jameson Bagshe Clark, Isabella Batko, Natalie Gretchen Bell, Andrew Belling, gold medalist. Avanish Bangu, Harshith Bashkar, Kunal Batai. Tanya Bahiana, <clears throat> Alex B. Christiana Blagovich. Kirsten Bloomfield, Catherine Anna Bozek, Joseph M. Brockman. Alexandra Bruton, Keely Imada Burnside, Benjamin Jordan Caddy. Michelle Kai, Karina Chan, Cindy Chan. Timothy Yu Hai Chan, Onella Charles, Ishwarya Alakish Chatuvardi, Alan Wan Chen, Rebecca Chen. Serena Chung. Justin Anthony Ching Johnson. John Antonio Chmiel. Melissa Pauline Ann Chopkin. Joey Chiao, Casey Chu, Zachary Trang, Justin Chung, Ken Shikin Chung. Katrina Domenica Sirion. Cassandra Laura Ann Convoy. Fabian Cretu. 
Erica Nicole De Jong. Phoebe Ziwei Ding, Hannah Durr, Anna Natasha De Rocher, Avnit Tardwar. Drishti Dwan, Vanshika Dwan, Arjan Singh. Dute, Robert De Cesare, Jerry Wanming Ding, Mackenzie Joseph Dodge, Michael Ross Dolan. Hong Dao Dong. Claire Dong. Michael Dao Dong. Brianne Reed Dover. Benjamin Wallace Drung, Ria D'Souza, Jin Tong Du, Joshua Steve Duby, Veronica Phyllis Dubois, Ergi Dooley. Ladies and gentlemen, as we change orders, let's take this opportunity to congratulate those graduates who have already crossed the stage. Elisa Efremova, Yamna Mahmoud El Saka, Christopher End, gold medalist. Emily Claire Evans. Catherine Angela Ferguson, Ethan James Foster, Alyssa Victoria Francis, Yuan Gao, Aman Garg. Victoria Alexandra Godin, 
Olivia Reshmi Ghosh Swaby, Ashana Guman, Kayla Gibson, Or Golan, Jping Gong. Zachary Gordon, Grace Kathleen Grafham, gold medalist, Brooke Madison Grant, Caitlin Elizabeth Griffin. Noreen Haji, Daniel Jongjin Han, Courtney Lauren Hardy, gold medalist, Sophia Justine Haythornthwaite, Austin Heffernan. Liam Doherty Hendricks, Edward Man Chong Ho, Kevin Ho, Vanessa Ho, Kelvin Hong. Suji Hong, gold medalist. <laughs> Timothy Su, Vincent Hua, Shuya Huang. Stephanie Ann Hume, Vicky Hung, Adnan Hussein, Jonathan Kwanbach Huang, Drashti Jane, Trevor Jerem. Ashley Elizabeth Daniela Janton, Dhruv Jasani, Raman Javahari Puya, Emma Nicole Jane, Sabrina Jetley. Tyler Johnson. Rebecca Jones. Emmanuel Jerome Joseph. Ayushi Joshi.
Akush Joshi, Adrienne Cam, Neil B. R. Camera, Lanujan Kaneswaran, Andrea Danielle Casse, gold medalist. Andrew Katyuka. Olivia Kavsky. Kevin Keshkometi. Maham Khalid. Haman Khan, Caitlin Kodawandi, gold medalist, Alexandria Rose King, Jane Ella Kirby. Laura Daphne Kozowski, Stefan Knezevich, Jonathan Jeffrey Coe, Nicholas Andrew Kosis, Isaac Kong. Brianna Copps, Justin Kritzinger, Kevin Kreziak, Anne Maria Kurian, Asha Kurup, Tristan Kwan. Matthew Laird, Michelle Erica Lau, Tammy Lau, Mark Lawrence, Carson Lay. Christian Lecce. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a rather large degree group, so let's take a moment now to congratulate those graduates across the stage. Christine Hyungjung Lee, Yun Kang Lee, Gaya L. Lee, Gyum Lee. Junho Lee, Jeon Lee, Lee. 
Sajin Lee, Rachel Lee, Melissa Susan Lee. Victoria Lee Kim, Karina Anna Lavartovich, Nicole Lesmeister, Silk Teen Lim, Julie Lang. Richard Liu. Chu Yu Lin. Kathleen Lin. Yiming Lin. Amy Liu, Jessica Liu, Governor General, Silver Medal, Muhan Liu, Ching Fan Liu. Elaine Liu, Tina Loiper, Kelvin Long, Gagandeep Longia. Jackie Liu. Alexandra Lowe's. Sophia Liu. Mary Wenching Liu. Alexander Luchak, Sien Tong Ma, Yun Jing Ma, Andrew McDonald, Michael McNeil, gold medalist, Mayuri Mahendran, Gold medalist. Rosalind Mainland, gold medalist. Maitri Makwana. Erica Clara Malana. Hugh Patrick Malani, Danny Matti, Caitlin Stephanie Matola Marchiori, Ladies and gentlemen, while we change orders, let's take a moment to applaud those graduates who have crossed.
Yasmin Masudi, James Vincent Leung, Lily Meng. Dahang Liu, Christian McCarthy, Leslie Muir Medina, Nicholas Robin Meta, Megan Mio. Ferdinand Joseph Miranda. Yeah. Ahmed Yudin Mohammed, Yehai Moharam, Caitlin Monahan. Lisa Moshinsky, Sean Sunil Matwani, Mitchell John Mumbai. Ashley Lynn Murray, Keshav Nurang, Emma Nastase. Serena Nath, Samina Nasrali, Andrew Tan Nioi. An Cindy Nguyen, David Hu Wen, Tiffany Tingshu Ni. Shahana Nurmrayan, Jacob Bradley Northey, Brooke Leon O'Donnell. We got this. Onye Dikachi Ogjikar, Gabrielle Onea, Winnie Ong. Samantha Miyoko Ashlyn Orr, Abdelhadi Osman, John Palmer. Kushmanjoth Kaur Pama, Claire Park, Ryan Park. Gursimran Pramar, Jasmine Pramar, Isabella Peshato. Mm -hmm. 
Vishesh Patel, Cameron Joseph Patterson, Rahul Pawa. Mark Peddle, Rachel Peet, Bronwyn Pellet, Katiana Pepito, Danielle Christina Irene Perro. Jocelyn Lee Peters. <clears throat> Celine Alexandra Petrie. Stephen Eric Poirier. Neaton Parbru. Emma Kate Prescott, Diana Roxana Purr, Raymond Hong Quach. Rumana Rafiq, Emrick Singh Cohen Ranchanda. Puneet Kar Ranoda. Hannah Mary Rose Roberts, Gregory Ian Robinson, Scott Roffey. Bethany Robin Rogers, Matthew Rock, Danielle Romanchik, Mihai Radu Romanovich. Matthew John Lawrence Rickman, Neil Sagittiv, Sonia Sater, Mitchell Jonathan Salter, Sabrina Alyssa Samji. Aman Pal Sayal, Olivia Claire Sale, Jonathan Selvanethan, Jonathan Maxwell Scro, Bindra Shah, Aidan Sher. Blake Andrew Shannon, Z Yi Shao, Graham Andrew Shaw, gold medalist.
Cindy Shen, Alicia Shang, Jiaming Shi. Valenti Shi, Amara Jane Simon, Andrea Singer. Andrew Kam Shing Su, Megan P. J. Smith, Sahar Sorabapur. Ji Su Song, Deep in Sony. R.C. Seurat. Richa Srivastana. Kayla Angela Stanta. Alexander John Steak. Methusian Subraspri, Carrie Ann Sullivan, Adrian Michelle Simons. Felicia Tai, Justin Tatko. Andre Nikolai Teju. Adam Lyle Tepperman, Darlene Thong, Christopher Tran. Eileen Sang, Daniel Saplenkov, Kian Chu, Victoria Dawn Turnbull. Luis Valencia Solorenzo, Shrishri Vashvishta. Reed Mitchell Vender, Shalani Jillian Venga, Mega Verma. Ankush Vij, Vicky Vo, Monica Volz.
Madison Taylor Walker, Aaron Elizabeth Walton Ball, Reed Francis Fasalo, gold medalist. Andrew Wang, Chin Chin Wang, gold medalist, Fang Ai Wang. Helen Wang, Wanning Wang, Xin Yu Wang. Jack Timothy Whelan, Mallory Paula White, Andrew Harper Williams. Kyle Jacob Delmar Wilms, Alan Wong, Boaz Ling Hong Wong. Fabian Wong, Matthew Car Wai Wong, Nancy Wu. Mary Xia, Jennifer Yushan Wang, Jaylin Yen. Vitusha Yogaswaran, Maysoon Dafala Yusef, Brian Minghing Yu. Lin Feng Zan, Jenny Zhang, Max Yulin Zhang. Xin Wen Zhang, Wen Jia Zhu. Grace Zhang Zhu. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science Honors Program. Yasovinath Bogda. Jackson Darian Blonde, gold medalist. Alex Kai Chun Chen. Vanessa Colton, Maya Gantar, Emily Ding Ao. Damoon Gahari, Ashwin Hari Mohan, 
Olivia Hannah Huff. Michael Yongjun Lee, Benson Wei Chang Lee, Charlotte Anna Mace. Mark Anthony Manzo, Pega Malahanjian, Chanel Rodrigo. Hannah Elaine Snyder, Grace Toe, Julie Tran. Ruth Tran, Jamie Van Butte. Maddie Vervani Farahani. Hunster Yang. Mr. Chancellor, the following are candidates for the degree Bachelor of Medical Sciences four-year program. Ryan Charles Brooks, Hyuk Trung Dem Nguyen, Jacqueline Kang. Lucas Thomas Arn Kirschlin, Alyssa Sahayuni, Taylor Ten. <laughs> Benjamin Wu, Emily Zhu, gold medalist. but who are not present today. At this time, I invite Mr. Chris Smith, representing our alumni, to say a few words. On behalf of Western's Alumni Association, it is my honor to welcome you as our newest members. You join a growing global community of Western alumni numbering more than 293,000, one of the largest among Canadian universities. Western, our faculties, and affiliated university colleges are very proud of its world-class standing. And we know you share that pride as graduates of our undergraduate and graduate programs. As alumni, we are united by memories of our time here, and particularly of the knowledge and friendships we gained. The Alumni Association is dedicated to fostering and preserving those important bonds through the many programs, 
services, and networking opportunities that are offered. Immediately following this ceremony, you, your family, and friends are invited to attend a reception in your honor, hosted by the Alumni Association, where each graduate will be bestowed with their Class of 2018 pin. It will be held in the University Community Center Mustang Lounge. I look forward to seeing you there. From Western Alumni, sincere congratulations on your achievement today and best wishes for the future. Before closing convocation, I wish to express my appreciation to all who have contributed to the success of the day. In particular, and on your behalf as well, I want to thank the University of Western Ontario Convocation Brass for their magnificent performance and their director, Professor James Mackay. May I request Remain at their seats while the academic procession leaves the hall. Convocation is now adjourned.